Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history where we shall uncover the secrets of the treacherous wetlands. Join me, Hogarth the Orc Slayer, alongside my esteemed partner, Galadriel Truthseeker, as we weave the tale of this boggy marshland. Our tale starts off with the formidable Dwarven fortress, Ironforge. This city stood as the ancestral abode of the Dwarves, where their people thrived in tranquility for countless ages, deep within the heart of the mountain. Nevertheless, their society expanded to a size that could no longer be accommodated within the confines of their subterranean city. While the venerable High King Modimus Anvilmar reigned over all dwarves with fairness, the seeds of division had taken root, giving rise to three formidable factions within the Dwarven society. The first one being the Bronzebeard clan. Under the rule of Thane, Madora and Bronzebeard, they maintained steadfast allegiance to the High King and stood as the traditional guardians of the Ironforge Mountain. In contrast, the second clan, known as the Wildhammer clan, led by Thane Cardros Wildhammer, resided in the foothills and craggy terrain surrounding the mountain's base, but yet they yearned for increased influence within the city. And then the third faction, the Dark Iron Clan, governed by the sorcerer Thane Thorisan, remained concealed within the profound depths beneath the mountain's core. There they were plotting intrigues against their Bronzebeard and Wildhammer brethren. While an uneasy coexistence was maintained among the three clans, the demise of High King Anvilmar, resulting from the inexorable march of time, plunged them into a relentless war for dominion over Ironforge itself. After years of bitter conflict, marked by the Bronzebeards boasting the mightiest standing army, they ultimately emerged as the victors, expelling both the Dark Irons and the Wildhammers from beneath the mountain. In the wake of the eternal strife that fractured the once mighty dwarven realm of Ironforge, the Wildhammer Dwarves embarked on a journey northeastward. There, amidst the rugged peaks of Grim Patol, they established their new capital. However, as the flames of the War of the Three Hammers reignited, the Dark Iron Clan launched a formidable assault on Grim Batol, nearly wresting it from the Wildhammer control. Only at the 11th hour were they repelled. Witnessing this irrevocable corruption and desolation of their cherished city, the majority of the Wildhammers charted a path northward, finding solace in the hinterlands. Meanwhile, a portion of their kin sought refuge in the lands of Northeron, an area situated in the utmost northern reaches of the Twilight Highlands, not too distant from their now-cursed former abode. When the flames of the Second War were kindled, the wetlands harboured several dwarven clans, their numbers totalling in the hundreds. Orgrim Doomhammer, war chief of the Old Horde and chieftain of the Black Rock clan, used his strategic wisdom and selected a diminutive island nestled in Baradin Bay of the wetlands, as the birthplace of his formidable invasion fleet. Opting for this place allowed for a direct route to the Hillsbrad foothills and enabled the Old Horde to circumvent the nascent defences of the Alliance of Lord Aeron. The bleeding Hollow Clan remained behind, entrusted with safeguarding the Horde's refining operations, while the Dragonmoor Clan took root in the heart of Grim Battle. The consequence of this occupation weighed heavily upon the region, the once abundant wildlife dwindled as both orcs and their dragons feasted voraciously on fresh prey, and the once pristine landscapes turned barren as even the flora bore the brunt of desolation. Those dwarves who could escape did so, while others, like Rom's clan, sought refuge beneath the earth, engaging in acts of resistance. Eventually, the Dragonmoor clan incurred the wrath of the Red Dragonflight, which, upon liberation from orc enslavement, unleashed its fury upon them. The surviving orcs retreated south to the mountains, where they persist to this day. Following the culmination of the Second War, the region was reclaimed, and Doomhammer's port underwent a transformation, reborn as the Alliance settlement of Menethil Harbour, in homage to Lord Aeron's king, Terenas Menethil II. Subsequently, the forces from the Horde of Draenor staged an assault on the harbour, their aim being to commandeer ships and set a course for the tomb of Sargaras. As for Grim Battle, it was wrested from the clutches of the Dragonmoor clan by the vigilant Red Dragonflight. Post-conflict, the Bronzebeard Dwarves of Ironforge were resolute in maintaining bonds and trade with their Wildhammer brethren. 
to bridge the gap between Kazmodan and Lordaeron, both economically and symbolically, they constructed the Thandor Span. In the north of the region, the Thandor Span stands as an imposing network of colossal stone bridges, forging a link between the rugged wetlands and the north of Kazmodan and the rolling expanse of the Arathi Highlands in southeastern Lordaeron. This remarkable feat of dwarven engineering ranks among the most monumental projects ever undertaken in Azeroth. A legacy cherished and protected by the steadfast Anvomars for no less than three generations. In days of yore, the land it traverses was recognised as the Thandol Valley. These formidable bridges possessed the strength to bear the burdens of entire armies, acting as the primary conduit for commerce between the dwarves and humans alike. Following the defeat of the orcs in the battle for Lord Aeron, Anduin Lothar relentlessly pushed the Old Horde from the continent herding them towards Kazmodan by the way of the indomitable Thandor Span. The formidable bridges not long ago endured grievous harm in the wake of the ruthless assault orchestrated by Cam Deep Fury and Balgarus the Foul of the Dark Iron Clan. In this harrowing skirmish, one of the twin bridges faced near total devastation. Valiant Dwarven troops waged a fierce battle to safeguard the sole remaining bridge and to recapture the adjacent township of Dunmoda. Our tale turns to Thargus Anvilmar, an Ironforged dwarf deeply devoted to King Magni Bronzebeard's reign, who had once gallantly stood side by side with King Varian in battle. Presently, he holds the esteemed position of Patriarch within the Anvilmar lineage, serving as the final direct heir to Modimus Anvilmar, the ultimate High King to have ever ruled over all dwarfkind. Thargus Anvilmar received a royal summons from King Magni Bronzebeard, tasking him with the duty of rendezvousing with Varian Rin, alongside the valiant companions Valera Sanguinar and Brawl Bearmantle. Their meeting point was Menethil Harbour, where Thargus would serve as their guide for the journey back to Ironforge. Upon their arrival, Thargus led the group to a local inn, where he played a pivotal role in aiding the trio in repelling an encroaching band affiliated with the Defias Brotherhood. As the quartet journeyed towards Ironforge, their path was beset by an aggressive faction of Dark Iron Dwarves. The heroes, displaying their prowess, overcame this perilous encounter, and their leader, Gunnar Flintrock, revealed to Thargas the dire plight of his brother, Yalma Anvilmar, who had been taken captive by the Dark Iron Dwarves at Thandolspan. In response, the company unanimously resolved to embark on a mission to rescue him. Upon reaching Thandolspan, they encountered Yalmar imprisoned by Dark Iron Dwarves under the sinister command of Balgarus the Foul. Balgarus harboured sinister intentions, aiming to end Yalmar's life by forcibly affixing the helm of the Anvilmars onto his countenance. Swiftly, Thargas intervened, severing Balgarus's hand before he could conjure a deadly fire spell, securing Yalmar's liberation. Balgarus, with his remaining hand, ignited one of the explosives prompting Yalmar to sacrifice himself by shielding his brother from the impending blast, sustaining grievous injuries in the process. In his final moments, Yalmar entrusted the helm of the Anvilmars to Thargus, urging him to safeguard Thandol Span in his name. Honouring his brother's legacy, Thargas waged a relentless battle against the Dark Irons, playing a pivotal role in reclaiming the Span and exacting retribution for Yalmar's sacrifice. While Yalmar did not survive this perilous endeavour, his selfless act spared the last remaining bridge of the span from complete obliteration. With the timely arrival of King Magni's dwarven reinforcements and the demise of the Dark Iron Chieftain, Balgaras the Foul, the valiant company of heroes succeeded in driving the Dark Iron invaders from the Thandol span and reclaimed it for the Alliance. Subsequently, Thargus made his way back to Ironforge, and it was there that the Assembly reached a unanimous decision to embark on an investigation concerning the mysterious disappearance of Marshal Windsor within the shadowy Black Rock depths. Thargus played a crucial role in this endeavour. Following these events, Thargus joined forces with the party in a resolute effort to drive Onyxia, the malevolent dragon, out of Stormwind and confront her in the treacherous Onyxia's lair. In the wake of their triumphant battle, with Onyxia's demise secured, Thargus departed alongside the returning Stormwind soldiers to the Eastern Kingdoms. His journey was motivated by the need to address matters pertaining to his brother's untimely demise and the management of his own estates. In a parting gesture, 
Varian extended heartfelt gratitude to Thargus for his unwavering aid and the bonds of friendship forged during their shared trials. He assured Thargus that he would always be able to find a steadfast ally in the city of Stormwind. For those who align themselves with the Alliance, Manothal Harbour may appear as a modest settlement nestled on the periphery of a rather serene region. However, this harbour serves as a remarkable hub for travel, boasting a direct connection to the Alliance's stalwart presence in Kalimdor, Darkshore. This link draws young Alliance night elves to embark on the arduous and perilous journey through the winding expanse of the wetlands, infamously known among travellers as the Wetlands Run. Their ultimate destination, the protective embrace of Ironforge's gates, from where they can continue their pilgrimage to the esteemed Alliance capital of Stormwind City. In addition to its connection to Kalimdor, Menethil Harbour serves as the embarkation point for numerous Alliance adventurers venturing into Northrend. Here, a direct route leads to the oldest Alliance settlement in Northrend, Valgard, nestled in the heart of the Howling Fjord. The Cataclysm, an event of immense magnitude, ushered in profound transformations within the very fabric of the wetlands. The serene landscape that once characterised this region was irrevocably altered as the earth trembled and the waters surged, reshaping the terrain and forever changing the face of this land. In the vicinity adjacent to the wetlands, within a region known as Loch Modan, stood a magnificent dam of monumental proportions, famously referred to as the Stone Wrought Dam. Situated to the east of Dunalgaz Pass, it traced its course along the northern boundary of Loch Modan. A marvel of the highest order, few are privy to the fact that its creation was orchestrated by the skilled hands of a dark iron dwarf. Indeed, the visionary architect behind its construction was none other than the illustrious Franklorn Forgewright, a mastermind credited with the inception of the stone wrought technique. However, for the purposes of our narrative, this dam holds profound significance, for it prevented the inundation of the wetlands beneath the waters. Yet, when the cataclysm wreaked havoc upon the world, the stone wrought dam met its untimely demise as Deathwing, the harbinger of destruction, soared menacingly over it. This catastrophic event led to the breach of the dam, unleashing a torrent that surged into the wetlands. Adding to the calamity, the fanatical followers of the Twilight's Hammer sect hastened the dam's ruination by employing the malevolent Twilight Landshaper. The once thriving area saw a mass exodus of its inhabitants, leaving behind only a contingent of surveyors led by the capable Forber Slab Chisel to assess the extent of the devastation. The zealous adherents of the Twilight's Hammer acting at the behest of the Maleficent Old Gods and their dire master, Neltharion, laid claim to the stronghold of Grim Battle as a pivotal element of their expansion across the Eastern Highlands. Their relentless advance witnessed the brutal repulsion of the forces belonging to the Red Dragonflight. Regrettably, the labourers who toiled tirelessly on the dam are no longer present, their fate shrouded in uncertainty since the cataclysmic collapse and it is plausible that they may have perished in the wake of this disaster. Menethil Harbour found itself partially submerged, yet its resilient denizens persisted in their habitation. The once sturdy docks now float upon the water's surface, while sandbags form a protective barrier throughout the town. Many of its residents have sought refuge on diminutive isles or within rowing boats, as the town's keep fell under the control of the Dark Iron Dwarves. As you approach from the town's entrance, the right side bears witness to considerable submersion and destruction. Notably, the Maiden's Virtue, the ship that had graced Menethil Harbour for half a decade, now rests beneath the unforgiving waves. The Dark Iron Dwarves vacated their modest campsite near the span, leaving it to be adopted by a genial Dark Iron entrepreneur, specialising in the trade of uncommon quality goods. Furthermore, the Dark Iron residents of the span, along with Foggy McCreel, departed from the area. Alliance adventurers joined forces with Thargus Anvilmar in a concerted effort to eradicate the Twilight Hammer menace lurking in Dun Modra. In the tale of Azeroth's history, the wetlands stand as a testament to the enduring strength and determination of its inhabitants. From its peaceful origins to the transformative events brought by the Cataclysm, 
this land has faced numerous trials. As the forces of the cataclysm subsided and the scars of destruction gradually healed, the wetlands embarked on a path to renewal. The dwarves, resolute in their pursuit of justice, reclaimed their lost territories, rebuilding their settlements and strengthening their alliances with allies from across the realm. The Wetlands' story is one of enduring change and unwavering determination. It serves as a powerful reminder that unity and perseverance can conquer even the most formidable challenges. As the sun sets over the rugged terrain and the waters of Loch Modern glimmer in the waning light, the Wetlands continue to thrive, a living testament to the indomitable spirit of its people.